Welcome to JSA TV, where we're covering the latest trends, news, and innovations from thought leaders like this guy to my right in the digital infrastructure space. And we are coming at you live from PTC 2025 in beautiful Honolulu, Hawaii. And this guy right here is Daniel Thomas. He's the CEO of Greenscale Data Centers. Daniel, welcome to JSA TV. Thanks for having me. You bet, you bet. So for our viewers that don't already know, why don't you tell us a little bit about Greenscale? For sure. So we're a, a platform that entered the marketplace uh, midway through last year. Mm -hmm. um, the premise being a large scale uh, data center infrastructure platform, primarily focused on Europe at this stage. Mm -hmm. uh, the investment behind the company is through uh, DTCP, which is a European investment fund. Uh, and the real premise of the platform is focusing on large scale customer infrastructure that needs to be deployed in different metros across mm -hmm. Europe. We're uh, operational with assets across Northern Ireland, Ireland, and uh, we also announced towards the end of last year, we're entering the Nordics. Okay. And soon to at least announce which market, so which country that will be. And we can't do that today. We can't do that today. <laughs> but, but in aggregate, uh, the company sits on about half a gigawatt of powered land and infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And then the premise being we're actually in the process of developing those sites at the moment. So um, you said uh, powered infrastructure. Yes. Uh, my assumption is that because the name is green scale, that there's a green, uh, a green element to this. You want to talk about that? I okay. can't. So... I'm quite literal by nature, so I, we, we spent a lot of time thinking about the name of the company. Yeah. Um, and in some respects, this is driven by the markets that we're going to, but also just my view of, of, I believe, where the industry needs to go. So you have initiatives like carbon offset credits that you can have as you, as you either build facilities or look at procurement of energy. Mm -hmm. Where we're actually building our assets, uh, one being Northern Ireland, actually off the northwest coast of Northern Ireland, you have some of the largest... Um, access to wind generation power mm -hmm. across all of Europe. So actually, we're in the process of arranging agreements that can that can give customers access, so direct line access to that energy, which which both is green at source, but also uh, cheaper to run from an operational standpoint. And then similarly, as we look at markets like the Nordics, you just have a tremendous amount of hydroelectric power mm -hmm. and then solar and wind that actually really is a vision for the company, scale being one component, uh -huh. but also access to green energy sources is the other. Okay. So... Um you, you said it, green energy at source. That's what I would love to speak to you about right now. Okay. My first question is, um, I, 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 I got to believe then that a key consideration, maybe the marquee consideration when you're looking at sites, is that green energy or that renewable energy source. Is that correct? Yeah. So if you take a step back and look at the industry, we are, we're primarily, uh, taking energy off the grid, mm -hmm. right? As you think about either smaller data center companies, and even now as the, infra as the industry moves to much larger deployments yeah. of data centers, you're typically uh, drawing power off the grid. There's no contribution back into the local economy. Now, what you have as a kind of market dynamic, actually holistically across Europe is new renewable projects that are looking for either anchor tenants, uh -huh. so customers who'll commit to taking some of the power, or even the approvals process that they have to go through to actually get these green lit to build. Now, our industry has become so large that these buildings become the anchor tenants to help support these renewable projects get off the ground. So you have, you have this draw on the grid, yeah. which is a tremendous draw on the energy grid across mm -hmm. Europe. But then helping support these new projects get developed, like new wind projects off the northwest of Ireland, actually contributes more energy back into the local economy. You have greener source energy. You have lower cost of operation on energy. So, yes, it benefits us as a data center operator and how we support customers. But actually, you bring a huge amount of benefit to the local community as well. That's OK. So... <laughs> Complicated, but but very much in but, a way. But also, we we talk about we talk about how this the, that none nothing happens in our industry anymore without this kind of like highly collaborative. I'll do my part, you do your part, so that we can do the the you know do the best for our end yes. user customers. But even within even within the industry, there are other pods of collaboration that are forming to help make sure that these things can become a reality. And so, what I think I heard, and pardon my ignorance, if if, no, if, no. if I didn't hear it correctly but you know there are there are energy there are green energy companies um in the markets that you're going to who are who want you to come in to be the anchor tenant 
to consume that green energy so that they can uh, give back to the local economies. Yes. So we we live in a very much so, very much so, <laughs> Shoo! very much so. We we live in a in some respects in a really complicated ecosystem of of uh, data centers requiring access to the grid to draw power. Right. It's driven by customers wanting to go into those data centers to deploy equipment, whether it's cloud or GPU for yeah. AI infrastructure, yeah. you name it. Right. But you see this uh, growth curve of demand on the grid for power, right? We, we're we deploying sites that are anywhere between uh, 200 and 300 megawatts in size. And it's not sustainable for the grids to continue to beef up the infrastructure mm -hmm. without having alternative source coming in mm -hmm. when you think about renewables. And real primary sources of renewables come through wind or solar, right? Yeah. And, and you yeah, have... Yeah. Uh, new initiatives like battery energy storage, which is also trying to come to market. And, and uh, yes, it's adjacent to our industry, but it's also what will help fuel the growth from a power infrastructure standpoint. Yes. And it's, a, I think the way you would describe, I always think of it as like one plus one equals three. Yeah. You need all these different parties to come together because yes, everyone can continue to request power from the grid, yeah. but you also need to create these arrangements where you can get additional power and primarily through renewable sources yeah. that increases the amount of power you can deploy at site. Not all of that necessarily will be dedicated to the data center. So you're also bringing it to wherever that local community is because they're building the transmission pipes into those regions. So it's a, this, I think this will change the industry over the next few years, but it's incumbent on our industry at least to help be an anchor for that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that's just it. There isn't, there isn't an industry that what we do doesn't touch or won't uh, ultimately yeah. impact yeah. over over the long haul. So Daniel, thank you so much. That was, a there, was a, there was a lot to I unpack a lot there. there but yeah. yeah, no, yeah, it was yeah. wonderful. Thank you okay. so much. Pleasure. Thanks oh, very much. You bet. You bet. And thank you viewers for watching JSA TV. Stay curious, stay connected, and we'll see you soon.